Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Ramadan Kareem. And welcome to our Ramadan Spirit Series in which we explore the many opportunities and benefits of this blessed month. My name is Altaf Hussein. Today, I wanted to focus a little bit on the connection between uh, taqwa and sadaqah and the idea of developing God consciousness in Ramadan and also connecting it with sadaqah or charity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in uh, uh, prescribing fasting upon us has said in Surah Baqarah that indeed it is for us to achieve a heightened state of consciousness. That you may fast so that you may achieve this heightened state of consciousness. And one has to wonder, why is that? Why are we focusing on developing a heightened state of consciousness? And what is the routine of uh, fasting day in and day out for, you know, 29 nights, 30 days? Um, uh, what does that do for us? Well, first and foremost, when we are actually and intentionally depriving ourselves of um, meeting our physical needs, you start to realize that most of your energy and your um, thought processes are spent on focusing on what's happening around you. When we've eaten too much, you may remember we feel sluggish and we're not really, you know, inclined to really think, uh, have higher order, you know, thought processes. So when we're not eating and drinking and generally refraining from our usual routine throughout the rest of the 11 months of the year, then you start to realize that, hey, there are things happening in my own life that I can reflect upon. There are th things happening in my family's life that I can reflect upon in my community, in my uh, nation, and of course, internationally. So that heightened state of consciousness allows us to really say to uh, one another, well, what about, what will I do with this state of consciousness? What will I do with this, you know, a higher level of taqwa, if you will? Among the things we talk about is sadaqah, is the idea that Muslims around the world and throughout, you know, since the beginning of, uh, of fasting, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was said about him that he was so generous during the month of Ramadan, and of course, the only other month is said by his beloved wife Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that he was generous and he fasted a lot in the month of Shaban. And so that was the only other month outside of Ramadan when, in which fasting was uh, uh, obligated uh, that he was also fasting but also focusing on uh, giving sadaqah or, you know, being charitable. So in our, you know, contemporary sort of life, we have to think through and say, you know, what does that mean for me? Like, how does how can I plan to be charitable, and how will that charity have an impact, if you will? So, for me, a lot of this comes down to beginning with the local needs, starting, for example, to look to see in our own community who is worthy of our support. And by that, I don't mean a judgmental sort of worthiness. What I mean is, what do we know about the people in our community and where are their stated needs, such as those who are um, uh, at risk of being unhoused or homeless, those who are um, experiencing food insecurity. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's very ironic that we talk about, um, you know, not eating and not drinking in the Ramadan. And yet, oftentimes, it gets completely out of proportion in terms of how much we actually end up eating and drinking and relaxing, because it's like we're giving ourselves a reward for having fasted during the day. And then we make up by eating you know, way too much and drinking way too much and, and just relaxing way too much. And so this idea of taqwa and achieving a heightened state of God consciousness tells us, well, how about this? How about you do both? Meaning you fast throughout the day, and you do eat and drink, but don't do it in excess. And in fact, when you are eating and drinking, think also about helping others to eat and drink or break their fast and to have a suhoor, uh, a meal, if you will. So the sadaka portion of it is important because sadaka, as you recall, is a voluntary act that we actually do that out of the good, you know, our the goodness of our own hearts. And when you are in a state of heightened consciousness, then hopefully we're looking around and saying, wow, I didn't realize that this many people will be in danger, for example, of not having um, a proper meal uh, for iftar. Whereas we are talking about, you know, eating way too much, 
they're not having anything uh, to be able to break their fast or even for suhoor in the in the morning if you will so when we think through what we can do and how to do it what we talk about is being consistent don't overdo it where you suddenly just start giving and giving and then there's no sort of rhyme or reason you haven't thought through how much to give where to give and and it, it can become somewhat overwhelming because there are so many causes and worthy causes to wish to give but when i mentioned earlier about local giving it's best to start there because if each of us takes responsibility for our own neighborhoods and our own communities then hopefully we are doing justice to those around us and this blessed month allows people in generally the mood is uplifted you know people are uh well except for when uh just the hour before iftar maybe not as uplifted and maybe a little bit too cranky and so forth but generally the mood is uplifted people are excited that ramadan is coming and then we have to pause and think you know what does that feel like if you are a family going through financial difficulty what does that feel like if you're a family you know who's had a recent layoff or uh, generally you've always been struggling to make ends meet and now you have to think through what that will be like for iftar and for suhoor and for you know new clothes for the children and for yourselves for eid and so forth so the beauty of our religion is that not only are we focusing on doing better and being better during ramadan as a springboard for being doing better and being better in the 11 months of the year the rest of the 11 months of the year but there are also conditions the quran tells us that if you are unable to fast and for and you know in terms of uh, uh so then the we can't go into all of it now in this short video but the point is that when you miss fasts right there are conditions under which you miss fasts and then to make them up but then also if you are chronically ill for example or if you have reached old age and you cannot fast then there's a charitable component that's introduced that you actually um, uh, uh, feed a, a person for each day of the uh, that you have not fasted now think about that right if you think about how many people generally are are having issues with health or for whatever other you know legitimate reasons are unable to fast and and then they can now be content that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them a rukhsa, a way out, whereby they can feed a person who is in need. So the identification of that person in need and then doing it systematically starts to create a long, I mean, a reciprocal sort of way. So I'm I'm unable to fast, I'm obligated to feed a, you know, a, a needy person, and then they are then able to have something to eat and they are able to fast and then have something to eat. And so on, on in a, almost like in a cyclical way, the, the good feeling that I get from making up, by, well, from not fasting, but then feeding someone and then having someone else fast, this becomes a way of uplifting the entire community. And this is something amazing because even as we approach um, uh, the end of Ramadan and may Allah help us indeed to fast the entire month and to experience the blessings of the entire month of Ramadan uh, as we approach the end of the month there's actually something within Ramadan that's very unique and it's also connected back to sadaqah and charity but it's called zakatul fitr because it is mandatory and if you recall what it is we're actually paying right what it costs to feed a single person for every member of our family so that means in the in the in the order of magnitude that you could end up having let's say a family of six um, you're giving somewhere between whatever the value is determined let's say sixty to hundred dollars and that's a lot mashallah that could feed and help so many people and help them to buy you know uh, uh, new clothes or at least you know um, uh, be able to enjoy the 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 first day of Shawwal or Eid al Fitr so of course. In a, in, a, in a way of saying, missing fast, feed a you know, hungry person. At the end of the month of Ramadan, give zakat al fitr so that others can also enjoy Ramadan, enjoy the, you know, the day of Eid and so forth. Then you start to realize that consciousness wasn't limited to self-improvement only. It was self-improvement along with trying to look to see how can I have an impact to the, you know, to the uh, people around, uh, on the people around me in a positive way not you know feeling pity for them not feeling sort of uh you know I, I i feel bad for them no just by saying oh allah i want to get closer to you 
I actually want to emulate the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and uh, and he was charitable, so I want to be charitable. You know, he looked to help the needy, and I want to help the needy. He, you know, uh, uh, restricted how much he ate at suhoor and at iftar. I want to emulate him, and you know, and do that. So that consciousness, hopefully, is in us, then in our family members, and of course, in everyone else with whom we deal, because it's infectious. This beautiful spirit of Ramadan, this uplifting spirit of Ramadan, this idea of you know uh, having a consciousness about the the needs of others and trying to address those needs, and then doing it through sadaqa. And then a systematic way of uh, you know of approaching uh, helping the needy. So I, I'm hoping really that each of us uh, uh, understands what a blessing it is to reach the blessed month of Ramadan, to be able to you know inshallah have the health and the well-being and the wherewithal, the emotional and physical and mental health you know wherewithal to be able to experience all of the amazing blessings. And that while we're doing that. And while we're trying to, you know, focus on self-improvement, that we're also really trying hard to focus on being charitable. And to the extent that someone may say, you know, well, it's a great reminder, but what if we don't have a lot to give? Well, a smile is a sadaqa, is a charity, as the Prophet ﷺ said. So maybe volunteering, if you're able to and have the time uh, to help others. Right, uh, almost every masjid has some form of program, either an iftar program on the weeknights and weekends, or just the weekends, or in the last ten nights where they have the qiyam and the suhoor and the iftar. And so maybe I can't give money, right? But I can be charitable by maybe helping serve people, helping you know uh, uh, in the kitchen where all everybody's involved and cooking, and and men and you know and women are 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 all participating in in trying to serve the community. Maybe I can do that. Right, or maybe I don't have that much time, so I can just help set up, uh, you know, for the iftar, and and I can help break it down, and you know, and clean up, and so forth. Whatever and however it is that we choose to do this, the take-home message is this: that we cannot allow another Ramadan to come and go, where nothing changed, where we're living in status quo, where my last Ramadan, you know, my this Ramadan is no different than my last Ramadan. That my I didn't prepare well enough, or, you know, and so I didn't have a have a sort of a plan of action to to get this done. So, the the consciousness development and then you know focusing on taqwa in Ramadan cannot be just like a jump start on the first day of fasting. It has to be worked on through Shaban, hopefully. And if you didn't do it, it's fine. You're in Ramadan. Let's do our best to get through it. But but make some you know important. Decisions. Sit down and reflect. How how is my fasting going? You know, what are the places where I can improve? Where can I get closer to emulating what the Prophet peace upon him uh, actually did? And the second main take home point is about the sadaka, about charity. That we need to try to see: can we give something every day, something small? You know, to be consistent. Uh, are there family members or ourselves who are missing fasts? And and then through the you know, and you can check with your local imam. Uh, what what am I expected to do? Is it is it that I am obligated to feed you know the the a needy person? And is there a group doing this? And and so forth. Right. So don't let these moments go by. Don't take it for granted. Uh, be grateful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that we reach this point. And inshallah, inshallah, uh, you know, before you know it, uh, we will all be talking about uh, uh, what a what a great memory we have from uh, uh, from having you know uh, uh, prepared for and and planned for and and had a great uh, uh, Ramadan, and that we were able to. Uh, actually, see the impact uh, of our uh, heightened consciousness and of the uh, of the sadaka that we uh, that we give, inshallah, to the people here and around the world. I know I emphasize local, but please let's not forget, you know, our brothers and sisters who are uh, uh, around the world and who are also in need. So may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless all of you and indeed help us to have a spiritually uplifting Ramadan. Salam alaikum.